thank you very much for that, Nicholas and the Capital Link team. I am very happy to be here. I'm Valerie Lee from Watson Farley and Williams. And before me today and you are uh, three um, of the great leasing companies in, in, in China. I'm very honored to be able to have them on my panel today. I've got Ms. Sharon Kuo from Bank of Communications Financial Leasing, Ms. Bella Chen from Shanghai Pudong Bank Financial Leasing, and of course, Mr. Jack Xu from China Merchants Bank Financial Leasing. Um, I, I don't know about you, but, but, but that panel before that was just the absolute perfect setup for our panel right now, which is focused on Chinese financial leasing, um, I couldn't, Berlin should have been on our panel, George should have been on our panel. You've got a little bit of a repertoire right there um, just on the benefits of Chinese financial leasing, but also certain considerations and perhaps um, thoughts that uh, international ship owners may have when it comes to approaching alternative um, financing for their ships. Um, just, just on the background of that, um, I'm sure you've heard recently there are reports that the Chinese-owned fleet is now globally one of the largest in terms of just gross tonnage. Um, and, and coupled with that, there may be, for, for, for example, considerations such as what Berlin said about giving away your baby. So I, I haven't heard it put even better. But um, so maybe we would just like to take this opportunity to hear from um, three of our esteemed panel members on what they have been doing, um, the, the issues that they have also had to address um, and that they are also dealing with in this developing market. Um, and, and so perhaps I, I'd like to start off a little bit on um, uh, a question that perhaps some people have been having, um, notwithstanding, for example, that Chinese leasing has obviously started a very, very strong growth in recent years, there is also the view that perhaps it's becoming slightly less attractive. Um, and I was just wondering what you would have to say in response to that. Karen? Yes. Thank you, Valerie. And good afternoon, everyone. Ms. Sharon from Bocom Leasing. Actually, I see no evidence showing that Chinese leasing is slowing down or is less appealing to the international clients. As far as I know that a lot of uh, leasing houses in China have been doing really well so far. And my colleagues uh, somewhere <laughs> in the hall, including myself, we still work very hard. We work overtime and uh, we still work on the holidays there is a still hair loss problem, and there is no sign it's getting better. And I think for last year and this year, I kept Valerie very busy, so I think you won't believe that we are less attractive to the international clients, right? Um, of course, I know that it's more convincing if, you, if we look at the numbers. For the past three quarters, for Bocom leasing, the shipping sectors alone, our uh, total drawdown was close to three billion US dollar, and for this entire year, it should be around four billion US dollar. So you can see that our business is still very good. Um, however, we have to admit that the competition in this market is getting more feared. But I think we are fully prepared and ready to meet the challenges. Thank Next. you. Hello. Uh, hello everyone, it's Bella Chen from SPDB Financial Leasing. Uh, it was very delightful to be here with you guys. And uh, also thanks for the invitation of the Capital Link. Uh, well, for the Valerie's questions, uh, we think that shipping industry is sec cyclical. And now we are in the position that maybe most of the ship owners have plenty of cash and uh, the new building price is pretty much high, and the vessel supply is uh, historical lo uh, low. And uh, we also see a lot of new entrants in the shipping sectors. So uh, for these reasons, we do have meet some challenges, but we think uh, the leasing can always provide more flexible uh, financial terms, like higher leverage and uh, longer profile and more flat uh, repayment. So we think that 
uh, we can nowadays see that a lot of uh, leasing companies exploit some operating leasing and also some new types of vessel to cope with these challenges. Yeah. Thank you, Valerie. Thank you, everyone. But we're happy to be uh, back uh, here. So after four years, so thanks for the Nicholas very good organization and uh, we're happy to um, many of our clients and friends to be back in Shanghai for CapitalLink uh, forum. So this is Jack from uh, CMB Leasing. So for Valerie's uh, question, uh, um, I'm, I would like to say, um, um, I don't believe there's no limitation for growth. So uh, maybe for some of our colleagues, maybe for some of the lessors, I wanted to be on a flight to quality. So, um, and even for, yes, just like uh, uh, Sharon just mentioned, so for a board camp, so very uh, uh, big for portfolio, and uh, they uh, Liu draw down for this year just close to three billion. Three billion is not a small number. So uh, even, I think the board camp's portfolio size is close to uh, for 20 the, something. For the shipping sector, 18 billion. So. <laughs> yeah, close to 20. So let's do some calculations. So for 20 billion US dollars, let's assume the average profile is 20 years. For each year's amortization is about 1 billion. So that's mean for Broadcom, if you just maintain the current portfolio, you have to do every year for a little down of 1 billion size. So this is not easy. So um, yes. So slow down, yes, relatively, it's because of a competition. So I have learned from the last panel, yes, there are more than 25 Chinese lessors are doing international shipping leasing business. So this is amazing. So now I, I just want to say um, our clients are very smart, especially for our Greek clients. These, they are sitting here. They just enjoy the time to be spoiled by the banks. So now is the time for you. Yeah, just go to China. Yeah, a lot of leasing houses want to compete each other to provide the best terms for you. So um, yeah, for us, we shall. Yeah, we want to be. Uh, um, yeah, to be prepared to sharpen our pants, to uh, work hard. So that's what I'm gonna say. Yeah, so I say I think um, Jack, Jack has right there just kind of thrown down the gauntlet and just, you know, t just basically saying, come on, we're, we're ready. We're, we're, we're here to bid for your business and we're, we're, we're ready to be as flexible as you need. Um, j j just an on that, um, one thing that we have seen um, just in terms of we're talking about portfolio size growth, um, what we have seen is due to obviously the very strong cash positions of owners, um, there are increasingly or more frequent um, exercises of early purchase options. Um, how big of a challenge is this for you and, and how have you responded or intend to respond to this? Yes, we did notice some of the clients, they exercise the early purchase option and, or they have the intention to exercise the early purchase option. We think that it's always very crucial to understand the rationale behind uh, the real purpose for uh, the ship owners, uh, ship owners to exercise this kind of early purchase option. Um, because of the good market conditions, and I think a lot of clients, they generated a very good revenue and they achieved a very good cash position. So for some clients, I think what they really want is to change their capital structure and they want to deleverage, they want less debt. For this group of people, I think uh, there is nothing we can do. Uh, we can just accommodate to their request because it is their uh, right to do the uh, to exercise this option and it's our obligation to deliver what we promise. But for some other clients, um, they, what they really want is to reduce the cost of funding of the company. That means more opportunities to the financier and of course to the Chinese leasing houses. And for the uh, last year and this year, we have done some projects. We have the clients to purchase back the vessels 
but we did more refinancing, do more uh, sale and lease back for the other vessels in their fleet. So you can see that sometimes um, the challenges is also opportunity. It just depends on how you look at it. Thank you. Uh, well, we think that early purchase option is a common clause in our deals. And uh, given this, we think leases can be more flexible in the deals. And for the source, we can receive the whole principles ahead of schedule. So actually, uh, in the past two years, we have seen a lot of applications from ship owners for the purchase application, yeah. And uh, we coordinated with our clients to find some win-win solutions, and uh, which we think is also aligned with our business philosophy, customer focus, yeah. So in the short term, uh, we have to admit that uh, there really be some negative impact on our shopping portfolio. But in the long term, we think that uh, that shows our clients have a better uh, financial performance. And uh, this also motivates us to deep thinking of what we can do to improve our financial services and the products. Yeah. Yes, we fully agree with Sharon and Ben. So we fully uh, support our clients to uh, do the prepayment. So uh, yes, if you have a lot of cash, like uh, in tank segment, uh, like in uh, container last year. So if you have a lot of windfall cash, why not? Why not prepay the debt? So it's a good time to uh, uh, reduce the leverage. Uh, it's very reasonable to uh, be prepared for the future and uh, to reserve more cash. So we fully support our clients to do this. And uh, I think some of our clients are very smart. When they uh, close the door, but at the same time they open a small window, so that means your shipping finance always a long, long-term ship uh, relationship. So the shipping finance always not for just one or two years. This is for 10 or even 15 years. So very smart clients maybe just keep a small portfolio with, uh, yeah, with the channels or resources just to keep the relationship there. So this is for the future. I think that's very smart. So, um, yeah, for us, we, we are fully support our clients to do everything and always be here. We are not just for one year or two years, for one deal or two deals, just for committed to the industry for longship, just like uh, uh, our friend, Mr. Chairman George. So he loaned everything for a very long time for Greek markets. We wanted to partner with these friends, uh, like Capital Link, to for a long-term ship with our clients. Thank you. Yeah, um, I'm just just to share um, from a lawyer's perspective. Um, I, I have a banking and finance background, so a lot of the shipping and the traditional financing that we're talking about, um, that was what I started with. I started my practice documenting a lot of those, um, but at the same time, I've I've seen the benefit and just the the thinking that goes behind the structuring of some of these transactions. Um, which I have had the pleasure and absolute honor of working on. What Berlin said earlier about the timelines, maybe he's a little bit aggressive on some of those because as a lawyer, it's not fun going through those kind of deadlines. But at the same time, the amount of dedication and thought that goes into structuring each of these deals, I think does reflect the fact that these are not just financiers who are trying to seize an opportunity, but it is about creating a sustainable and long partnership. And you can only do that by, as Jack and Bella and, and Sharon have said, really considering what it is that the clients need. Um, and and, and it's, it's been an absolute pleasure to be able to assist and, and really learn um, from, from these valued um, partners um, uh, uh, in shipping. Um, and just, just in relation to that, perhaps um, we can talk a little bit about um, the, I, I would say I, I'm seeing more requests and more interest on time charters as opposed to, you know, your usual sale and lease back, which is typically a bare boat finance charter um, sort of arrangement. 
Um, is that something that you, you, you are receptive to? What, what, what is your response to things like that? Yeah, we did notice that a lot of leasing houses started testing water of the TC structure. For the Bocom leasing, we have also successfully reached some deals with the end users like the oil major companies, energy companies. Um, I think the big advantage for the leasing houses to do the TC structure is the uh, cost of funding, is the relatively low cost of funding we can obtain with the relatively low cost of funding, I think we are in the better position to provide a competitive TC rate. However, um, being the real ship owner is difficult in many ways, we have to admit that. Um, because being short of the know-how, uh, being short of the human resources, uh, we cannot have this TC structure in scale. So going forward, we will continue to explore more solutions to better feed the financial need from the clients. Thank you. Well, we have also, uh, we have also explored some time charter operating leasing last year for some PCTCs and uh, multi-purpose vessels. And uh, I think the purpose of to attaching to the TC operating leasing is that we can upgrade our professionalities and also make our, us more sensitive to the shipping market. But it's also a studying process. Yeah. Yes, I fully agree with uh, Sharon. So for SMB leasing, so we are basically, we still are uh, financial, uh, we are the lender, we are finan uh, shipping finance provider. So for, yeah, very small scale, we, um, place the Lubin Waters bio ourselves to do our time charter or operating structure with clients. It's very, very uh, small schedule, scale. So um, first for the, but for, yes, just for the leads of our clients, we, we definitely, we can do the, from the accounting angle, we can do this kind of uh, operating leads. Yes, for accounting reasons, for some tax reasons, we can do this. Let's show our flexibility. But the real, we are, we are not trying to be real ship owners, just like uh, Sharon mentioned. We cannot compete with the real ship owners. So for the, yeah, maybe just for the very uh, standard uh, dry box, uh, so we can do this, just maybe for some educations, for some experience, learn something from the industry, and the partnership with our clients to do these kind of things. So I, I would like to say it's very dangerous if you consider, especially for PCTC, for operating needs, it's very dangerous. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and just moving to another hot topic, which I think was mentioned in the earlier panels as well, um, the role of green shipping and basically um, the increasing focus on not only ensuring we have ships um, do, applying the trade, but actually also um, making sure that, that, that we're doing a better job of um, transporting um, goods and, and, and running that sort of business. Um, uh, in certain financial institutions, there is a huge focus on this um, restriction. I, you know, depends on how you look at it. What, what, what is what is your company's approach to um, environmentally friendly ships and, and green shipping? Those uh, anything on decarbonization or your requirements in relation to Poseidon, for example? It's a long question. Um, we think that shipping is a cyclical, it's a seasonal, and it's volatile. And for each of the sectors, the niche market has its own cycle to follow. So I think all the characteristics together require a financier like us um, to always take a dynamic approach to the ever-changing market. Um, so I think um, going forward, uh, we will continue to support our existing clients and we will explore more opportunities from the potential clients. Actually, there is 
for the time being, there is no particular sector we may put extra weight on, although we notice that there are some bullish sign in some sectors like the LPG sector, tanker sector, where we believe that maybe more opportunities could be come from that sectors. And we will continue to uh, support the green shipping, and we are keen on providing the fund to the all types of all type of the vessels with the alternative fuels, uh, ammonia, methanol, and dual fuel. Um, and in the past, we have uh, done some projects that, that, that uh, only, only finance the scrubber things. So going forward, I believe that for some of the clients, they may have the need to do the retrofit of their propeller system or the engine system. Uh, I think under this case, we are more than willing to support as well. Um, regarding to the conventional vessels, I have to say that we believe that you will not disappear overnight. Uh, it takes some time to let these vessels to facing out in the market. So I think as long as these vessels is uh, still in uh, complying with the regulations, there is no reason for us not to support. Yeah. Uh, so basically, we can do everything. <laughs> yeah. Uh, right. Uh, we think that both ship owners and financial financiers are under increasing pressures from the regulator and also the shareholder for the ESG. So we think that the green transition will cause fundamental change to the shipping and the trade offshore and the energy. And uh, until the end of this year, our company will have 12 dual fuel vessels, and uh, including some container ships, some PCTC, and uh, some large gas carriers. They will be powered by LNG, LPG, and Essing. So we think that uh, this, is, uh, uh, this is the direction that we are going forward for more green and uh, some renewable energies. And uh, we also try to find some uh, sustainability, uh, sus sustainable uh, linked loans from our refinancers, and also maybe some ESG syndicated loans from there to reduce our cost. All in all, we think we will facilitate the green transition at our best. Thank you. Yes, uh, as for us, I think for all of the bank-backed leasing houses have uh, same requirements because there is a, a green finance guide, guidance uh, from the CBRC, the China Bank Regulatory Committee. So this is uh, from the top level. So there is a required for doing this type of green finance. So uh, for example, from our mud bank level, so there's a lot of uh, uh, guideline or some rules to doing this kind of uh, green investment, green uh, uh, bonds, and the green uh, corporate loan, green uh, uh, wealth management. So, so I think there's uh, no uh, doubt for uh, everybody to promote this kind of uh, uh, environmental uh, uh, vessel assets. Um, but I think I, I wanted to say something because we are the finance providers, so we are not the technical people. I think choosing right people is more important to, uh, than uh, choosing right technology for us. So just to choose right clients and follow the clients so you can get the right technology. So this is our, what we are uh, wanting to do. So we have no uh, science in the bank. So we have no science in our team. So how do we know which is the right uh, or the best way to find the alternative fuel in the future? So um, of course we follow all the rules because we issue bonds in the international capital markets because we have a lot of uh, project refinance with the European banks. Even we are not the member of the Pacific principle, but now we have followed the rules. So um, sometimes maybe we can show some yeah, flexibility for all the challenges, but this depends. Of course, we shall follow our clients. That's all. Thank you. Uh, sorry, there is one more thing I I, I, should, I would like to add. I really uh, agree with Jack. Um, I think 
Although we are very proactive promoting the green shipping, but we are not the experts, we are not the end users. So, so I think our clients, the ship owners and the end users, they are in the better situation to choose what type of vessel they need. As a financier, we will do everything possible to support. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I, I, I suppose what I'm hearing a lot of is um, obviously we, we work a lot with the international banks and um, Watson Farley itself, we, we, we actually were helped with the um, drafting of the Poseidon principles and um, there, there, there is a lot of um, technology, skill, uh, knowledge going behind that and what I am hearing is uh, a humility that perhaps um, you, you may not know the intricacies of each and every um, requirement, but at the end of the day, you are, you, you, you are fully supportive of it. And um, I, I have heard this from ship owners themselves when, when they are saying, uh, we, we are the ones operating the ships. We have our measurements. We have, we, 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 we have, um, we, we, we are seeing what the technology is out there and, and we are still trying to get our head round um, which is the right option for us. And I, I suppose that's that flexibility that you're willing to consider um, and, and just hear from your clients and, and try to, to facilitate that as far as possible. Um, and p perhaps it'll be interesting to note uh, what, what is your expectation for 2024? Uh, where do you see... Um, the market going? What is your strategy and approach? Are there any sectors in particular that you would be focusing on? I think I have covered this. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. Okay. I, I think oh. I, have, I have already covered this section. Okay, thank you for the question. Uh, actually, SPDB financial leasing's debut of shipping is in 2018. So we have only five years history, and uh, we are involving from uh, domestic oriented to international players. And uh, until end of this year, we will have 123 vessels. So looking into the uh, future, we think that uh, uh, we will expand our uh, portfolio size uh, steadily and uh, more focus on the greener ship and the renewable energies and uh, also we will try some I think joint lease with some industrial leasing companies uh, to cooperate together yeah and uh, actually we expected to have further innovation differentiation and uh, diversification of our shipping leasing uh, into the next phase of growth and we also welcome some interactions with the ship owners and other leasing companies uh, to cooperate and uh, provide some comprehensive financial solutions to our clients. Thank you. Yes, for us, I think, uh, yeah, this is a very uh, difficult question for me. So how did you um, for 2024? So um, I think this is also a difficult question for ship owners. What segment? What segments we can uh, invest to in uh, 2024? So um, now the interest rate is all time high, and also um, the very fierce competition between the banks and the lenders. So it's good timing for ship owners, but it's bad time for financiers. So um, I think for us, we just to be, um, I think all of the three. Uh, uh, panelists are uh, from the bank affiliate to the leasing company. So that means we uh, got the license of the bank license. We are, uni uh, we are strictly uh, regulated by the CBRC, and uh, I think we shall be uh, disciplined. So, um, um, yes, I think you're watch more, be more careful is more, more important uh, for expanding uh, or to seek for high speed growth. Uh, but for us, I shall be uh, focused on our clients' basis to meet our clients' requirements for the, yes, for the energy transition. I think there's still a lot of uh, um, a room to uh, improve our portfolio size. And also, you know, currently maybe uh, more and more some new energy or wind farm uh, installation ships or some of the very um, 
yeah, because of the alternative fuel ships uh, uh, designs. So there's more requirements from the shipping finance. So we still have a lot of room to improve, uh, but we shall be uh, careful. Thank you. So, so maybe um, to just kind of try and wrap up the, the, the panel, um, if we're speaking to lots of um, ship owners out there, if there was something that you can, you, you to, to, to explain wh where you think perhaps some of your competitive advantage is, um, in this currently, admittedly, very, very competitive market, um, particularly for financiers, or, or, or is, there, is there anything that you could? Yeah, I still think that our biggest competitive advantage is the flexibility. But the flexibility things can be viewed in two aspects. For on one hand, the flexibility means that we are very flexible in terms of the leverage, the tenor, the profile, the pre-dealer financing, post-dealer financing, the structures, the TC structure, variable charter structure. Um, but on the other hand, the flexibility means that we are very open to communicate. Means that no matter the market is good or bad, the ups and downs, we will always stand by our clients and try to seek the solution for their clients. We think that as long as the both parties have the willingness to sort out the problem together, there is always a way out. Thank you. Okay. Uh, we think that we are relative newcomer to the shop leasing sector compared to other uh, financiers. And uh, the competitive advantage we have is that maybe we have zero non-performance assets and uh, we are more open to accept uh, new clients and uh, we can in more easier to embrace the innovations in this sector. Yeah. Yes, if you wonder, if you ask what are the difference between your three, I think this is much more difficult. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, if you ask, just to say, say uh, what's the difference between Chinese leasing houses and uh, other banks, I can say the same answers with sharing. But I can see big, a little bit more about us, because CMB, China Merchant Bank, we have uh, a major shareholder, is, which is uh, China Merchant Group. So we do have, on the group level, we do have shipping building armors. We do have uh, shipping armors. So we have blood in shipping. So... Um, Yes, that's maybe our division with others. So we can, we want to be, uh, yes, just to speak very same language with uh, our clients, with lawyers. So um, yeah, you tried to be always to be standing with our clients. Okay, thank you. Um, so yes. So, so for, for those who, who can't hear, the question is, um, how, what is your response to the, the point that the order book is nearly filled up for the, for the year? Uh, I, I think, yeah. I, I think for different sectors, the, order, the situation of the order book is different. So um, take, uh, the tanker sector, for example, I think the order book is at a very low level, and we think it's very positive for the supply side. So that is why I just mentioned we uh, noticed some bullish sign in these sectors. Yeah, but for some others, I, I don't know what sectors you mean. Maybe LNG, you mean the order book? Oh, okay. For the. Uh, <laughs> maximum uh, capacity. You cannot go financing, for mm. instance, from now to 2027, well, from not what you said so far. <laughs> Therefore, what I want to raise actually is there is a, there is, there is a future certainly for all of us, even ship owners, shipping financiers uh, of uh, whatever uh, type, 
But here in China at this very moment, because it is a market that we are serving, you see the shipyards being almost full. But we are not just the two new buildings. <laughs> we still do the second-hand vessels. Oh, okay. Yes, if, if I may, uh, can I just uh, ask this question? So, very tricky question from our chairman. So, um, yes, of course. I just mentioned, I don't believe there's no limitation for every uh, bank's portfolio size. No limitation. And the, the equity always very um, important for everyone. So you cannot expand your equity uh, in any way. So I understand that Bokem now is preparing for the, for the project in maybe 27 or even 28 something. So for 24, they can prepare the project in 29 or even longer, even uh, uh, later. Um, so um, yes, I think when we reach that level, we are more on the flight quality we are more on focus on our client base to uh, maybe not only just focus on the top tier clients like Boca. So maybe some of the very uh, good looking, not so big size, still our clients. So that's me can do more new uh, clients. Yes, this is my answer. <laughs> So you know, before Broadcom just do one deal for maybe one billion, and later maybe we can do 10 deals for one billion, or 20 clients. So this is my understanding. Yeah. Actually, actually, Bokum is a leader. I mean, uh, he's he, leading. He, he, Bokum yes. is Bokum, all right. Yeah, Bokum is Bokum. Uh, even Bokum has to be prepared about the bottleneck on the production of uh, uh, new ships, etc., or on the m and etc. But thank you very much for the answer. I don't want to monopolize. <laughs> thank you. That, that was actually an excellent segue to our last question, which really is what do you see as maybe the, mm, the more immediate challenges um, for you right now in the, in the, in the Chinese leasing market? Uh, I think two of the biggest challenges are the <clears throat> high valuation, uh, high valuation of the vessels and the high interest rates. For the high valuation of the vessels, um, I think that, as you can see, that a lot of um, sectors, the shipbuilding contract press has reached the, the historical high, but we will not simply draw the conclusion to say that it's too risky. We will not touch these sectors. I think that as long as for these vessels have a, a long-term, for example, long-term time charter, that it has a strong, it has a stable cash flow to back to the high valuation. Uh, there is no problem for us to continue support, uh, continue to give them a very relatively higher leverage. Uh, for the high interest rate things, I think um, because due to the good market condition, uh, a lot of clients, they have a lot of cash on hand. So actually this uh, problem is not that significant as we expected, at least for the time being. And also on the bright side, I think um, uh, now you see that risk of free rate so far is at a very high level. But if you look at the margin side, actually it's at a quite restrained level. In the past few years, it's normally to see the margin like 300, 400 something. But nowadays, I think it's more normal to see a 200 basis point something. Um, and don't forget that when we talk about leasing, uh, the tenor can be 10 years, 15 years. If you consider the project in its life term, I think the average interest rate uh, you secure is not necessarily worse than the projects you secured in a, a few years ago. So I think that is one positive side. Thank you. Uh, right. Uh, we think there are uh, four challenges actually we can see. First is the very high interest rate. And uh, the second is the decreasing demand for the cash from ship owners. And the third is the competitions from European banks and other new entrants in the shipping financing sector. And uh, the last one we think is the outside risk for the shipping. For example, like the war. Yeah, 
So actually, we will analyze the code demand from our clients, and uh, we will commit to provide the optimal financial solutions to them. Yes, for yes, for be leasing. I think uh, there are many, many uh, challenges, like uh, yes, uh, the other panelists mentioned just now. So uh, all-time high uh, interest interest rates, and the yeah, relatively high for the asset value and also the fierce competition between the lenders. So all of the challenges for us. Yeah, I think the most thing, uh, important thing is for us is to try to be uh, disciplined. I think uh, maybe for everybody, so the most challenging one is how to convince your boss, give you a friendly KPI. So that's much more important. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Um, I, I hope this has been a useful discussion. Uh, I hope it's been, it's been helpful in highlighting that um, the, the, there are issues and there are challenges, and, and these are all recognized by um, your partners, the Chinese leasing houses. We hope this is a good opening and that it will be the start of perhaps some further discussions that you may wish to have. Um, to just keep an open mind, there are plenty of options, um, but um, hopefully, it's, it's clear that you know, Chinese leasing is here to stay and that they will be here to support you in your journey to be successful shippers for a brighter future for everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.